Welcome to the Productivity Show, a podcast where we believe that you can get the important things done without having to sacrifice your health, family, and things that matter to you. My name is Tam Pham. I'm the founder and CEO of Asian Efficiency, where we help people become more productive at work and in life. And today, I'm also joined by my co-host, Brooks Duncan, who's the COO of Asian Efficiency. How's it going, Tan? What's going on this beautiful Productivity Monday? It's a great start of the week. As we are recording this, we're just diving into calendar apps today. And uh, we both came from productivity from different backgrounds, which is kind of interesting. So you came from a corporate background. I came from like an entrepreneurship background, but we all use calendar. So I'm really interested to kind of hear your perspective on what makes for a good calendar app, both for iOS and Androids. And I'm curious to see what your top recommendations are in this particular episode. Brooks, before we start diving in, would you mind kind of like quickly sharing your story of how you got into productivity? Yeah, like you said, I come from the corporate direction. I worked in all sorts of different roles. I worked in large corporate. I worked in a three-person startup. I worked in government. I worked in software companies. I've kind of done it all from three people to 55,000 people, like I said. And I was actually an Asian efficiency customer before joining the team. I bought the OmniFocus premium posts. And eventually I joined the team and we started this podcast really to help people become more productive at work and in life. And I know, Tam, one thing you say all the time is that happy people are productive people. So what we want to do is every single week we want to share tips, we want to share strategies to help you win back time have more energy, and really get focused on what matters. And sometimes we have guests, like last week we had a guest, Chris Bailey, that was fantastic. But sometimes it's just the two of us, like this episode, and those are great too. But either way, we always wanna give you actionable productivity tips and insights. And one thing we really love is getting feedback from listeners. So we received a note from Loren who says, my drive time is elevated when I listen to your podcast. <laughs> and I really like that. I love hearing where people are listening to the productivity show. I personally listen to audiobooks in the car, but I know a lot of listeners listen to podcasts. We hear that quite a bit. So if you want to let us know where you listen to The Productivity Show or you want to get in touch and let us know any feedback or anything like that, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You can leave us a review on Spotify. You can hit us up on Twitter, Asian Efficiency, or you can email at podcast at asianefficiency.com. All right, Tan. So like you said, we're going to be talking about calendar apps, but what can people get out of this episode if they're going to listen? So you probably read the title, so you're interested in calendar apps, obviously. So we're going to be talking about one of our favorite calendar apps that we've been using for many years, and it might not be the one that you suspect it is. We're also going to be talking about an Android calendar app that is great, and if you're an Android user, you definitely want to check this one out. But also, we have a new calendar app we haven't really talked about before, and it claims to be the daily planner for busy professional, and I know... Brooks, you're a big fan of this one. So before we start diving in, if you're new to the show, one of the things we always like to do is start off the episode with our top three favorite resources on this particular topic, in this case, calendar. So Brooks, what are the top three resources today? All right. So resource number one is a tool that we talked about on the podcast before, but since we're doing a calendar episode, we kind of have to mention it here. And one product I really love is the New Year Calendar. So the New Year Calendar is not digital. It's a physical calendar, but the great thing about it is it's big. So you can mount it up on a wall. You can put it horizontally. You can put it vertically. You can get it in a paper format or a dry erase format. That's the way I do it. And I order one every single year. And I really like it because you're not going to put your whole schedule on it. That doesn't make a lot of sense. What it's really great for is seeing those big rocks, seeing what your year is going to look like, your quarters are going to look like, and when you have vacations and stuff like that. It's just great to have an at-a-glance calendar. So I have mine up on my wall. That's number one. Number two is a book. It's called Bullet Journal by Ryder Carroll. So if you're not familiar, Bullet Journal is a system. It's not so much a product, although you can buy special bullet journals, but really it's a system for using paper to track your life, to use it as a calendar, a journal, a task manager, kind of does it all. And the people who love bullet journals or Bujos as it's called, really, really love it. And the creator of it named Ryder Carroll wrote a book called Bullet Journal that takes you to the whole thing. And I actually really enjoyed the book. So check that out. That's number two. And number three resource is going to be a little different. Over 
In a previous podcast, we talked about the Recommendo newsletter. And so this came from the Recommendo newsletter. And what it is, is a webcam for a watering hole in Namibia. (laughs) So kind of out there productivity wise, but basically it's a live stream on YouTube all the time. And I just find it really relaxing and calming to turn it on, have it in the background. Sometimes I have it on my iPad and it's just a watering hole in the desert and you can watch animals come and drink, hang out. Sometimes they get into little fights, which is kind of fun. So I've seen oryxes, jackals, foxes, zebras. I told my kids if I ever see a giraffe my life will be complete and then sure enough a giraffe showed up or actually six of them and it's kind of a weird thing but i just find it really relaxing to have that live stream on so if you're somebody who likes animals check out the namibia watering hole live stream and like you said we're going to have links to everything that we share in the show notes by going to theproductivityshow.com or if you're listening to this in your podcast app just swipe and it'll be right there and you can find us on youtube at theproductivityshow.com forward slash clips or theproductivityshow.com slash YouTube. All right, let's get into calendar apps. And we want to talk about this calendar apps in this episode because we really believe that your calendar is just so important. It brings together time management. It helps you get focused. And really the right calendar app can honestly make a huge difference between being disorganized and knowing what you should be doing at any moment. But then of course, The question becomes, how do you choose a calendar? How do you choose a calendar app? So Tan, I thought I'd ask you, what are some features that you think are critical or at least really good to have for a calendar app? There are so many different calendars out there and it's hard to pick sometimes which one is better than the other one. And it can be expensive to figure that out. It can be very time consuming. So we've done all the legwork to figure out What are the best calendar apps, both on Mac, iOS, and Android? But when it comes to digital calendars, a couple of features that I think are really important are one, having access to multiple calendars and being able to see them in one bird's eye view. I think that's critical, especially if you're someone who has a job and you have your personal life, you wanna be able to mix or mingle the two or keep them independent. You wanna be able to see different calendars in one bird's eye view as much as you can. The other thing is being able to invite people on the go and collaborate with people as you're using your calendar as well. That's one of the big benefits of using a digital calendar over say a paper calendar. And then another thing is be able to synchronize different calendar systems as well. Being able to synchronize a Google calendar with an Outlook calendar is really powerful, especially if you're using different platforms at work or in your personal life. And being able to integrate with other apps makes your workflow so much more seamless. Being able to integrate with stuff like Zoom, podcast recordings like this with YouTube, recording stuff with other people on your team, being able to synchronize all these different services and integrate them in your calendar is one of the critical features that I think every calendar should have. And so as you are evaluating which calendar you should use, I would think of all these different features that you're using and that resonated with you and make sure that those are in your checklist as you're looking at them. And so when I think of a digital calendar, I think there's so many disadvantages as well, but there's so many more advantages to overuse a paper calendar that I'm personally all in on just using digital calendars altogether. And I find that I've never found a really big need for having analog calendars moving forward. And so if you're kind of in the camp of you're using paper calendars, I'm not saying that you have to switch over to digital calendars, although I do think it's superior. How if you're trying to go digital, some of the apps that we recommend will be a great shortcut for you. And by the way, something I really, really believe in, and I know you do too, Tan, is we aren't saying that you have to go out and download a shiny new calendar app, right? The calendar app that's built into iOS, Google Calendar on Android, and Outlook if you're in the Microsoft ecosystem, honestly, they're all great. We don't want you to switch just for the sake of switching. This is something we always try to be careful of on the podcast. We don't want to just give you a a fire hose of apps and say, hey, go figure out which one's right for you. If you like what you're using, if it's doing the job for you, definitely switch with it. One thing, Tan, I know you always say is that an app has to be 10 times better than you're currently using in order to switch. And this applies to calendar apps as well. But if you can switch or if you are maybe 
finding that you're just having trouble keeping up, then some of these extra features we're going to be talking about on the episode, many people find that they get a pet. Many people find that they get a productivity boost, including us. So we're going to get right into it. And an app that I really, really, I'm actually surprised how much I like it is called Sunsama. And that is a web app. It's an Android app. It's an iOS app. And it you can download it on your computer as well. And I've been playing with this one for a little bit, probably about two weeks now. And I really like it a lot. And if you're familiar with Sansama, you might be raising a flag here as you're listening to this, because really Sansama isn't just a calendar and it's not just a task manager. It really combines them all together and helps you plan and manage your time. And like I've said, I've been all in on Sunsama for the last couple of weeks because I wanted to really evaluate it. So I'm kind of doing it parallel. And some of the things about it is that you do kind of need to buy into the structure because what it does is at the start of your day, it takes you through a, and you can turn all this off, but at the start of the day, it takes you through a wizard helping you plan your day. And the thing I really like about it though is that it integrates with all the other things that you use. So it integrates with your email, it integrates with Asana, it integrates with Jira, GitHub, Notion, Todoist, all sorts of other task systems and other systems. And basically what that means is that you can drag what you want to work on into a day and helps it, it helps you build your day and kind of time block out. And if you want, you can say how long you wanna work on it and what it will do is then it will warn you if you're maybe trying to pack too much into your day. We're all guilty of that, right? This is one thing we hear from customers a lot is, man, I just put, I have all this stuff in my task manager and I just, I, I've got too much of my day and then I feel down because I didn't complete all the stuff I wanted to complete. And that is very common thing to have happened with Samsama. You can still do it, it doesn't stop you, but it will give you a little warning if it's if your day is at risk. Now, one thing I will say, and the reason why you might've put up a little flag is that the mobile app is more of a viewer. It doesn't have the full features that the web app does. So it's kind of cheating a little bit to include it in an episode about iOS and Android apps. But since I've been using it so much and I really, really liked it, I wanted to include it here. Now, the question is, I've been trying it out for two weeks. The question you might have, the question you might have is, am I going to switch from it? And the answer is I'm not sure. The only thing about the only thing about Sansama is it's kind of quote unquote expensive. They have a pricing manifesto that explains why, and I actually agree with all of their points. They want to make a sustainable business. It's a, a it's a business tool that will help you with your life. But for me, and the pricing is about $20 a month US and it's cheaper on the annual pan. For me, the reason I'm not sure of it is not because I don't think it's worth it. It's because of what I said before about the 10 times rule, which is I already had a system that worked quite well. And so for me, adding $20 US, because I'm in Canada, $20 US a month, I'm not sure if it's worth it to me to switch. But if I was coming from a system where things were just out of control, I didn't have a handle on my day, I might really consider Sansama because it's really great. And I see that Tan was not in, but I wanted to keep going and get that recorded. <laughs> so this will be fun to edit out. Let's see what we can do about getting Tan back in. Let me see. This has never happened before. But you all are able to hear me, right? Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. I guess worst case scenario, worst case scenario, I can, I can keep on going with the recording and then we can loop back Tannen later. So we'll just give him one more minute. See, Giacomo, this is your, this is your punishment for, for joining live. <laughs> That too. Okay, maybe what I'll do, hmm, say what you will about Zoom, this never happened in Zoom. Okay. Oh. There we, go. there we go. So Tan, it's giving me a message that you have Riverside open in other tabs and it says ask Tan to close all over browser tabs open with Riverside. I'm guessing you probably don't, right? I just did that, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. All right, we're good then. Yeah. All right, we're still recording. So this will be fun. This is a Brooks problem, not a Tan problem though. Okay, so Tan, why don't we start with, I'm gonna stay- uh, Finishing up with Sansama? Yeah, I'm gonna finish up with Sansama and then I will throw it to you asking what you think about Sansama and we'll go from there. All right? Okay. So yeah, I really liked, so yeah, I really like Sansama. I will say if you wanna use it, like I said, you kinda need to buy into the whole planning process, but it's really great for adding structure to time blocking, choosing your important tasks and seeing where you have problems throughout your day. Now, Tan, I'm curious, we've never really talked about Sansama before internally anyway. What do you think of Sansama? Have you tried it out? What do you think? So I have not personally tried it out. I've done some research on it and looked into it and played around with it a little bit, but I can't say that I'm a user of it because I use another account lab, which I'll talk about next that I think is great. So one of the things I've always talked about on Asian efficiency is that the holy grail is being able to integrate your calendar app with your task manager. And the fact that Sansama kind of does both is I think a great idea. I wish more apps that are being used as calendars and task managers were, a good, were as good as how Sansama does it. So. I think it's a great tool. And what I think is also really smart is they market it as a daily planner. So it's not actually like a calendar or a task manager. It's like a daily planner, which is its own little separate category. And I think that really resonates with a lot of people. And when I use it and looked at it, I thought, okay, this is actually a tool that you can use for planning your day and actually managing your time and figuring out how to prioritize your stuff. And because it also integrates with like GitHub, Asana, Todoist, and all these different platforms, you can use all the different tools and kind of pull it into one screen and being able to manage your time and block things off that way. I think it's a great tool. So would I use it myself? I could see using it myself, but like you said earlier, I'm someone who will only switch apps if it's 10 times better. And I don't think it's quite 10 times better yet for me to make a complete switch just because I'm really happy with another app that I'm using. But for a lot of people, I can see how this could be real helpful. Tan, you teased it. You said there's an app that you like better. So why don't you take the next one and let us know what you're using? Absolutely. And before we start diving into that, I do want to give a shout out to one of our online courses that we have called Automation Academy. This is actually an online course that we've created here at Asian Efficiency that helps you create workflows and processes and streamline your day-to-day -day work. So. If you're spending a lot of time behind a computer and you're doing a lot of menial tasks, manual tasks, things that are quite repetitive, I want you to think about and even consider how you can automate a lot of those things that you do at work, whether it's sending invoices, sending the same types of emails, putting stuff in Excel sheets, putting stuff away on your hard drive and computer and filing things away. There's so many things you can do to streamline your day-to-day -day work. And that's what we teach inside Automation Academy. So if you're interested in checking out this course, go to theproductivityshow.com slash automation. And I think you're gonna really enjoy what you're gonna be learning in there. All right, so let's talk about my favorite calendar app. 
So my favorite calendar app is called Fantastical. It's available on iOS and Mac and it's free. They do have a premium version of it for about 50 bucks a year that unlocks premium features. And what I like most about Fantastical is that the UI is beautiful. It's very easy to use. It's very efficient. They update the app and UI quite often. So it's always being innovated, worked on, tweaked, and much more efficient over time as well. And so I've been using it for about three to four years now. And I've been using it alongside with another Calendar app called BusyCal because that was my favorite app before Fantastical. And I've always been a big proponent of BusyCal as well because it's the advanced calendar app that we recommend for most people. And what made me jump over from BusyCal to Fantastical is simply because BusyCal doesn't really update their app anymore and it looks kind of outdated compared to Fantastical, which is always being updated and it's has a lot of integrations with other tools as well. And they're oftentimes the first to do so. For example, with Zoom, Calendly, and so on. And so if you're thinking about using a new calendar app, I highly recommend checking out Fantastical for both iOS and Mac. Yeah, I've used Fantastical for years as well. This is why I'm kind of on the bubble about switching over to Sansama totally because I have, like I said, a great system using Fantastical, OmniFocus, and Day One for my journal. So I kind of have a, a good system there that works well for me. But I really like Fantastical. I like the widgets. That's one thing. I have a widget on my lock screen. Do you use Fantastical widgets at all, Tan, or, or do you just use the app? I do use the widget for Fantastical, both on my phone and on my desktop. And I find it very helpful being able to quickly see what's happening in there. But I think it's not like a feature that I think would jump people over the edge and say, oh, this is really why you should use it. I think it's just a, a nice to have. Yeah, for sure. Though I will say, we're going to get into this in a moment, but I will say that for some people, widgets are a differentiator. If you want to be able to see for a glance what's going on, some people really like it. I think because both you and I are more desktop focus than mobile focus maybe that isn't as much of a need for us but for somebody who's on the go all the time even stuff like widgets can actually make a big difference another feature i like about it though this is on desktop again is you can set it so that your next appointment shows up in the menu bar of your computer and i find that really helpful just to kind of always see what's coming up next so i'm kind of like mentally preparing for it I really like Fantastical. Like I said, I'm a premium member. I have been for a while. Now there is some controversy because they just recently jacked up their price. I haven't been hit with that price increase yet, but some people are a little unhappy about that. So I haven't decided if that's going to change anything for me, but at least for right now, for what Fantastical does, I really, really like it. Now we use a tool called Calendly that allows people to book meetings with us and stuff like that. And Fantastical has that built in too, which is really, really interesting. Because we are a Calendly shop here, I haven't really used it too much, but I think it's a great feature and it's cool that, like you said, they're always improving, they're always iterating, and they're always adding new features, which is what you want from a subscription app, right? If you're gonna pay a subscription for something, you want it to always feel like it's improving. Otherwise you think I should have just paid a one-time fee for that. So I love Fantastical, great choice. One thing I will say that is important for people to know is that over the last few years, I've seen a lot of apps move to a subscription model. And I know a lot of people aren't happy about that, but I actually think it's a great move for the developers because when you're creating an app, it takes a lot of efforts, a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of testing to create a great app. Now, once you launch it and you get a one-time payment for the app, there's no more incentive for the developers to really innovate as much anymore because when you're developing and updating a new app, it can cost a lot of time and energy as well. But if you're not getting paid for it necessarily, you run into these cash flow issues. And so I have found that the apps that tend to be a subscription model tend to be updated more often. They tend to be better. They tend to be more stable just because the developers are being supported. And so as a consumer, you might think that that's actually a bad thing on your part because you're being billed every single month or every single year, but you actually get the better app oftentimes. So 
I wouldn't hold back from choosing a subscription app because I know we have a lot of subscriptions already and you're paying for a lot of different things. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you are paying for a quality program and app that you're going to be using day to day. And obviously, you want to pick the one that's best, right? And then oftentimes, I find that the ones that are in the subscription model have the incentive aligned to create the best app possible. And another thing about Fantastical that I really love is their natural language processing. Or in other words, if you just type in, I have lunch with Brooks tomorrow at 12 p.m. at this restaurant, it will actually create it accordingly to what you just said. So it's really powerful to be able to recognize what you're typing and identifying who you're having lunch with, you know, where it is, at what time. And no matter how you phrase it, it's really smart in picking that up. And so it makes it really easy to quickly enter stuff. So if you know the keyboard shortcut on your desktop to add a new calendar entry, you can quickly type it in and on, and there you go. It's on your calendar. It's super easy and efficient. So it's one of those little things that makes such a big difference, especially if you're a calendar ninja and you add a lot of stuff to your calendar. Knowing a few keyboard shortcuts is going to make all the difference in terms of how efficient you become with that over time. Yeah, other tools do natural language. But Fantastical, first of all, did it first, I'm going to say. And honestly, I do think that they still do it better than anyone else. So it's a great way to add things to your calendar. Now, one of the knocks about Fantastical is that it is Mac only and iOS only. So what if you are an Android? The Android market is tough for calendar apps. And the reason why is I think most people just use Google Calendar. And I actually like the Google Calendar app a lot. I think the Google Calendar app is a really nice calendar app. So people generally are gonna just use the Google Calendar app, or if they say use Outlook at work, they're gonna use Outlook for their calendar in that way. So I think it's kind of tough to make a really good sustainable, make a really good sustainable calendar app on Android, but there is one called Business Calendar 2. And this is probably the most popular non-Google Calendar app. In fact, people call it Google Calendar on steroids. And the thing about it is that people like is it's really customizable. There is views and themes so you can have it look and work exactly how you want. It has a task view that you can sync with Google Tasks. So that's great. If you're a Google Tasks user, like you were saying earlier, it brings together your calendar and your tasks. And one thing about it, it's great for triaging too, because you can move tasks to the next day with just a tap. You have to, you don't have to go in and manually reset stuff and change dates and stuff like that. It makes it really fast and easy to move tasks around. And pretty uniquely for a mobile app, I'm going to say, is you can drag and drop calendar events between days, you can resize them. It's kind of like on Outlook, you know, how you can just drag a meeting and it will it will create it for the length that you want. You can do that in Business Calendar too as well. So people who come from that world really like that. Another big differentiator, another big differentiator for it is that, and another big differentiator for it is that it has a ton of widgets and people like the widgets way better than the stock Google Calendar ones. So there's seven different really customizable widgets for day, week, for your tasks, for a calendar view. So really you can have exactly what you wanna see on your home screen, which is kind of a knock against the Google Calendar app is the widgets aren't that great. And for people who love widgets, that's a really important thing. So if you're an Android user and if Google Calendar isn't quite doing it for you, Check out Business Calendar too. It's a really popular one and people seem to love it. Now, don't worry, Tan, I am not gonna put you on the spot and ask you what you think of Business Calendar too, because I know you're not an Android guy. So instead, I won't ask you that. I will ask you what people should do with all this information. Should they just stop using whatever calendar app they're, they're using and jump onto something else? Or what action do we want people to take at the end of this episode? As always, we want to end things with something actionable. So if you came all the way to the end of this episode, first of all, you're awesome. Thank you for listening to The Productivity Show. But also, I recommend that when you listen to this, if there's something that stood out to you and you went, oh, that's the calendar app that I need to use or have, go give it a try. All of, a, lot of these, a lot of these apps here have free trials that you can download and use, so go check it out. And if you're going, hey, you know what? These apps sounded great, but I'm kind of happy already with what I have. 
congratulations. You found a workflow or calendar app already that you really love and use. So stick to that. As I always like to say, if it's not 10 times better, don't switch. Just continue to use what you have moving forward. And if you want to find links to everything that we talked about, you can find them in the show notes. You can also find all full-length episodes in the backlog from The Productivity Show at theproductivityshow.com. And thank you for listening to The Productivity Show. We'll see you next time.